Everyone sees it in the horizon, you can't really miss it. It's so much part of the fabric of Glasgow. But unless you're studying here, or unless you deliberately come up to visit, most Glaswegians will have driven past it, walked past it, but will have never set foot inside its gates. Which is a real shame because it's open to the public and you can come up and wander around. But the sheer scale of the architecture at Glasgow University, it makes you feel very, very small. I mean, you literally feel that one of the borrowers walking about in some of the great halls. They're designed and built on such a scale that they can be quite intimidating, but they're not actually, they're very friendly spaces. They're nice spaces to be in. Even though they're built on a superhuman scale, they're still human spaces. They're warm, they're beautifully designed, built with absolutely no expense spared. What many folk don't realise is that Glasgow University didn't start life in the West End. Founded in 1451, it originally began up beside the cathedral. And then in 1460, it was granted land just on the east side of the High Street in Glasgow. And that's where the university was for 400 years, right in the centre of historic Glasgow. Needless to say though, as the Industrial Revolution came along, what had been well-to-do parts of Glasgow all of a sudden found themselves hemmed in by factories, furnaces, belching chimneys, and actually a great deal of poverty and disease. But it was the 1860s before they found this site. There was no smog, there was no smoke. So it all sort of became part of a new narrative. Glasgow University really reinvented itself up here. This was almost like a new start for a new age. We're in the industrial age, we're no longer medievalists. Everything had to be modern and new. But remarkably, the architect, Gilbert Scott, looked back to the Gothic for his design. And that wasn't something that went down particularly well with some folk in Glasgow. Alexander Greek Thompson, who would probably have built a Greek revival building, he was absolutely horrified by the mock Gothic building. Thomas Annan, really the, the father of modern Glasgow photography, he'd been commissioned in the 1860s to take pictures of the area around the old university. And Thomas's son, James, carried on that tradition. So when Glasgow University Tower was built, James took one look at it and presumably thought, that's the tallest tripod in Glasgow. I can get great photos of the city from up there. So James and his assistants carried all their kit up to the top of the tower. Only to discover that the city was so polluted, so shrouded in smog and soot, that they could see hee-haw. Uh, if they looked west, it was okay, but if they looked east, the whole city centre was just under one heavy fog of smog. So they had to climb down again with no photographs. The only time of the year that they could actually get perfectly clear photographs across the whole of the city was during the Glasgow Fair. So on the 19th of July, 1905, they went back up the tower and here was the city revealed. When you looked east, the whole of Glasgow laid out before you like a map with an absolute forest of chimneys, all these factory chimneys. The factories that gave Glasgow its great wealth, its great industrial wealth, its industrial global fame, were all having two weeks doing the water, and the city was lying quiet. <laughs> 